Hello, this is Dr. Ryan Kazami. Uh, today I would like to discuss a presentation of some uh, atypical symptoms that some patients have reported following dental implant treatments. Uh, while dental implants are uh, certainly proven to be safe and biologically compatible with uh, over 60 years of evidence and studies and experience, there are several reports of atypical symptoms uh, that uh, some uh, have thought uh, may be related to uh, dental implants. Uh, let's talk about this patient who came to us for removal of a dental implant uh, that was placed about five months prior to uh, his visit. He reported development of a range of symptoms that began shortly after uh, the implant placement and had not resolved. Uh, per his report, a Bicon dental implant was initially placed by his dentist. And for some reason, the implant at the time when it was placed uh, was not positioned correctly, so it was immediately removed, and then it was repositioned in the site. Uh, during the placement of the implant, which uh, in this particular type requires a tapping type of an approach, uh, he described a very severe discomfort and radiating pain uh, to his sinus and also to the other side of his face. And after the procedure, he experienced uh, ongoing pain and what he described as sinus fullness, pressure in the area of the implant, and also pain on the other side of his face, which uh, never seemed to uh, resolve. Uh, his symptoms continued for several months, and he was told by his dentist that the implant was healing well and there were no signs of any infection or obvious problems. Uh, with continuing uh, symptoms, he then sought uh, multiple consultations with his physicians and a neurologist to see if there was possibly other reasons for his um, symptoms. However, uh, all the evaluations and tests were proven to be normal, and so with the assumptions that there may be a link between his atypical symptoms and the dental implant, uh, he was recommended to have the implant removed. So when he first presented to us for examination, uh, the site of the implant appeared to be healthy and normal. Um, and uh, however, there was a moderate discomfort uh, upon palpation on the outer aspect of the ridge where the implant was placed. However, there were no obvious signs of uh, infection or inflammation. The x-ray and the comb beam CT scan showed a very poorly positioned dental implant, uh, which was in close proximity to the outer wall of the bone. The bone itself appeared well healed with no evidence of infection or sinus involvement. So uh, while his uh, atypical symptoms uh, could not be positively correlated to the implant itself, uh, the position was determined to be quite poor and obviously not restorable with a proper crown, mainly because of the uh, poor orientation uh, and um, angle of the implant. The patient uh, requested removal of the implant hoping that his symptoms would resolve and also that he might be able to have another implant placed at a later time once uh, the site is healed. The rationale for removal of the implant was certainly supported because of its poor position and the inability to have it restored. However, its uh, relationship to the atypical symptoms was uh, uncertain. Removal of any ailing or failing dental implant uh, is currently performed using a reverse torque technique. However, since Bicon dental implants are technically not a screw type of implant and they're required to be submerged in a bone for proper healing, uh, the removal could not be accomplished by this uh, non-invasive reverse torque approach. Instead, it requires um, rather gentle removal of the bone around it so it can be dislodged from its site. So for this, a lateral or a side approach for the bone removal was uh, selected as the misplaced implant appeared to be closer 
to the outer wall uh, of the alveolar bone and hence more accessible. The procedure involves elevation of a full thickness gingival flap and next a uh, curette uh, is used to gently uncover the implant surface and identify its position in uh, correlation with the cone beam CT scan. Next, a piezotome was used to gently remove minimal amount of bone around the implant. And finally, the implant was elevated uh, laterally toward the outside uh, using an elevator and it was subsequently removed. Uh, the site was cleaned and irrigated. Next, the defect was grafted with bone particulate material and then covered with a resolvable guided bone regeneration membrane to allow regeneration of the bone in the defect. The gingival uh, flap was then repositioned and closed uh, primarily. Patient was monitored closely during the healing phase. In the coming weeks, patient reported some improvement of his symptoms. And in spite of his improvement, we cannot with certainty explain the ideology of his symptoms and uh, certainly cannot make a positive correlation uh, of those symptoms to the dental implant itself. However, uh, some type of a localized irritation, inflammation, or reaction uh, cannot be ruled out. At this point, we are continuing to monitor his progress uh, closely and um, evaluating him to see if the removal of the implant has any positive effect in resolving his symptoms.